I should silence my phone too. Oh, but what if you get a message from? I was gonna say the dwarves, but <laughs> the dwarves. That's how that's how Uwe Rosenberg attends, attempts to talk to me is through the dwarves that call. And we're live! Uh, let me send the tweet out that we are live. We're kind of streaming at an earlier time uh, this morning. This this morning. That's how early this is. Guess what time zone we're in. No, I know. Um, we're streaming early today because there were so many people that were super excited about our Cave vs. Cave stream that I was like, we should just stream early. Um, and we're just gonna play the game twice because I apparently can't stop playing it. And um, also that way, um, there's some components and some things that have happened in this game that uh, watching two plays of it will be beneficial for you. Also, hello, Angeles. Um, Angeles just got back to Sydney a couple hours ago, and he's tuning in for the stream, which yep. is pretty. Pretty cool. Angela says mine, but actually I think he's mistaken. It's actually cave. It's not mine versus mine. It's cave versus cave. Yeah. Um, which you can't really see because the camera is... We have such a white background. And we wear dark shirts. So that's how it is. But this is Uwe Rosenberg's cave versus cave. Um, this is Steve's bowl of grapes. Um, so, yeah. This is a one to two player game. So there is a solo variant for this. Or you can play two player, which is what we're intending to do. Um, and it is essentially... It is, it is to Caverna... As all creatures big and small is to Agricola. So, yeah. Okay. Oh no! Poor Eden. Eden says this link doesn't work for her. Um, they know it's live, but it's not showing anything. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's the link from Twitter or if it's the link from YouTube, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go over and do a quick rules and setup. So what we're going to do is, well, Steve munches grapes. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull everything out. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, there is a rule book. It is three-page, four-page rule book. Um, things are written kind of in a weird order in it, but we're going to go with it. There is a board that is a long board and this board is double-sided so on near the river there's a little cave kind of like in the action tail and there's either going to be one or two little dwarfish viking looking creatures you want the side if you're playing two player that has two little dwarfish uh viking creatures and notice this side doesn't really have a river um this side you get one less three action spot when you play solo this side you get all of those balls so we're going to put this here. We're going to play upside down for y'all so we don't do weird camera hand magic. Um, so you want to put that board within easy reach of both players. Then there are two player boards. And it's kind of cool. They're kind of fold halfway. Um, and they link together nicely. But there is a male and a female side. And when you put them together, ha ha, it is the logo. Um... Yeah, you can. Steve's, Steve's gesturing if you should uh, close the blinds. Um, so Steve's going to get that side, because whatever. Oh, wow. Now that you did that, my contrast settings are all wonky. I'm helpful. You're so helpful. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take this side. So each player gets one of these boards. And then there's an extra little case spot. I'll talk about that in a second. And then there are action tiles, and these are gray-backed tiles that have numbers on them, um, and some of them have people on them. So what you're going to do is the ones which have numbers on them, you're going to stack, you're going to shuffle amongst themselves, uh, and then you're going to put them face down on the spot that also has that number. So this stack of threes gets shuffled. Steve stackling, stackling. The stack of twos, um, and then the threes go out, and then twos go out, and then there is a set of tiles that have a little, a little person hanging out. 
you're gonna, it doesn't really matter, you don't need to shuffle these. All of the ones, there's four of them, these are the starting actions. These are the ones that are available at the beginning of every game and are available every round forever. So you're just gonna put them in the beginning. And again, um, we're playing with it facing you, uh, even though you can't really see them. So we're helpful like that. Yeah. Alrighty. So, hey John. Um, okay. Then I don't need the box anymore. You can put the bags in the box over there. Then there are pieces. So there are wall pieces, which are these ones. And these are used um, throughout the game. And I'll explain that in a second. But they're limited, and they're sort of like the fences in all creatures big and small, if you're familiar with that. Then there are some wooden bits, and then there are these tokens, which are round tokens. We're not going to use these, or sorry, action tokens. We're not going to use these action tokens because I feel they're redundant. And then there's a whole bunch of like little cardboard chits that show pictures of the wooden chips. And so all of these like little chips, um, we're just going to put back in the bag. We're not going to use those. Because these are replacements, or if you want to use those instead of the nice wooden bits that they provide. Um, but we're going to use the nice wooden bits. Um, so, I'm just going to show you what every player gets. Every player will get one bit of flax, which is the green one. One bit of um, wheat, which is the wheat. Then you get a food token, standard Uwe Rosenberg food token. Then you get a gold, and the gold is double-sided. It is the only resource that can go above 10, so it's got a plus 10 on one side. And then you get a stone and a wood, and every player is going to take all of those tokens and put them on their one spot on their resource track. So this track right here keeps track of how many resources each player has, and as you gain or use resources, you're going to pay them from this track. So if I gain three... Flax, I'm going to go up to here, and then I'll spend two, so on and so forth. And as I said, the gold is the only one that can go above 10. So if you get gold all the way up here, and then you get more gold, you flip it, and then you use the track again, gold cannot go above 19. So, there you go. Okay, then there's a starting player token. Randomly determine who gets that. Uh, whichever player is most like a rooster with a helm on. Oh, okay. Um, it's a very specific, um, it's a very specific starting player rule. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Here we go. Then, um, these are the room tiles. So there should be six room tiles that have kind of just like a light rubble background. So this one, which is light rubble, you're going to take all those. Those are what we're going to start the game with, so you can just have them. And then all the other ones with, like, a whole bunch of rubble on the back, you're just going to make a stack, and you're going to shuffle those up really well. And then you're going to distribute them between the two players. Each player is going to get nine on their player board. So the six that um, are just public, we're just going to put out... And I'm going to explain how these rooms work using these. And I'm again facing everything towards the camera today so y'all get to see it. So Steve shuffled that good enough. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Alright. <laughs> so you have on your player board a whole bunch of spots that look like squares. You have two spots that have plus food symbols. Those are important to remember that you see. And then without looking at your stack, you're going to fill in all of those squares, except there's one square that has like a do not pickaxe symbol. You're not going to put one there. And you're not going to put one on your cave entrance, which is the one room that everybody starts with. That would be an immediate cave in, and you would probably just lose. Well, you just, yeah, you wouldn't play. You would just yeah. be done. Yay, I built my Yay. cave. It's dead. Um, so, yeah. So, that's set up. So, let's talk about how this game plays. So this is a worker placement game without workers. Um, and really it's it's an action selection game. So when you want to take an action, instead of taking a worker and putting it on a spot on the board, thus restricting that spot from your opponent, because there's only two players, 
All you're going to do, actually, you could do this with multiple players. Mm -hmm. um, all you're going to do is when you want to take an action, you're going to take the tile that is the action tile, and you're going to put it beside your board, and then you're going to do that action. Each round, you're going to take a number of actions that corresponds to which phase of the game it is. So the first three rounds are phase two, I guess you would say. So in this section of the game, because one of these tiles is going to be revealed every round, we're going to take two actions each, alternating. Then in this phase, we're going to take three actions each. And in the final round of the game, we're each going to take four actions. So, and the number of actions corresponds with the number of dwarves that are sitting below that section yeah. on the board. So that, and two, that, that's kind of like dwarves. the built-in number of workers that you have. So if you have two workers, then you get a kid or you know somebody moves in with y'all. And then at the very end, um, you get a fourth roommate. So yeah, Uncle Rolf. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning of every round, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to flip the next actions token. So to start the game, we're going to flip this number two action token. Then we're going to draft actions. So let's talk about what kind of tiles we have and what they look like. Straight off the bat, kind of the most um, common symbol would be the number inside of a yellow box symbol. So this means one room action. So if you take this uh, tile, I will get plus two wood, standard Rosenberg, right? And then I get to take one room action. So I get to activate one of the rooms that I have already built in my cave. Everybody starts with one cave room. So if I took this tile, I would get plus one wood, and then I would get to pick plus one of any basic resource that I would like. So I would do plus two wood, and then say I want a wheat. Okay? So that's that one. Um, the other action tile that you would see is kind of standard Rosenberg. This is actually a great tile to have come out. Um, mm -hmm. So this is, I get a whole bunch of stuff. I get to do one room action, and then I get plus one wood or one stone, and I get to build a wall, which is fantastic. To build a wall, you take one of the wall tiles, which are limited, and you put it in between two like cave-in spots. And you need, or not cave-in, ha, two cave spots. And you need to put the wall such in a place that you could like access it. Like I couldn't put my first wall way up here because I can't, I can't get there and you necessarily. Can't, you couldn't put it here, right? Um, I could because I can slink in there. That's, that's Oh, okay. okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it had to be. Oh. No, it's kind of like. I don't, there's not super strict walls. I think I kind of just house rule that. But, um, yeah. Steve can look that up for us. Um, but you, you saw the ore thing. It's kind of standard Rosenberg. There's also ores within the actions. So this one right here, this top action, whenever you see the pickaxe, that means you get to excavate. So you get to pick one of the tiles on your board and you get to dig it up. So I'm going to dig up this one for example purposes because this is the one I always dig up first. When you dig up, um, when you excavate, you can only access tiles that are orthogonally adjacent to a place you have already excavated. So I could dig up um, this tile, this tile, this tile, or this tile, but not these two because I haven't haven't gotten there. Right? Mm -hmm. For which? Uh, I'm just... Like, while I'm teaching the internet, I want to verify I'm correct. If I'm teaching you, I don't care. Ah, I just ruined all my resources. Yes. I'm going to have to give you some flax for that. Oh, goodness. Okay. So, only orthogonally adjacent rooms to where you have excavated. Also, if for some reason I have built a wall, um, I can't excavate behind the wall. So now I can no longer excavate this one because there is a wall here. I have to go the long way around to get to it. Okay. Um, it said for building a wall between any two adjacent cavern spaces. It didn't say anything about accessible. Hmm. So I think you can just place a wall anywhere. Interesting. Which I take uh, adjacent as into adjacent where you've built, but that's me. I don't know. Well, in the in the example, they do show it between two. No, but that's you're adjacent to a, a place you can reach. Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't specify. It just yeah, says we'll have that two. argument later. Okay. Okay. So you're on this title. This title. Ah. You dig out a cave spot, or you can pay two food and dig out two cave spots. Woo! Then at the end, you just get plus one stone. Um, and you can do that in any order. So you could get the plus one stone and then pay two food to dig out two spots. That's allowed. Um, yeah, the only other interesting things or like different stuff 
uh, in this symbol wise is they introduce this symbol which is um, a number sitting on top of a shelf. Uh, it's hard to see. So this is a two sitting on the shelf. This means that you're going to raise one of the depicted symbols, because it's an or, um, up to the number two level on your resource track. There's one of those for food that will raise it to the three level, um, and there's one that will raise all of the items that are below one to the one level. So if I had a situation like this, and I had this room and I activated it, I could raise all of these to the one shelf, but anything beyond the one shelf just doesn't, it just stays, okay? So that is a kind of new Rosenberg action symbol. The last one is to build a room. Do, do, do. So for this one, it's you're going to pay one food per worker to build a room, and the room symbol is the placing a tile symbol. So what it means by one food per worker is what phase of the game we're in. So if we're in this phase, we have two workers. We each have two workers. So to build a room, it's going to cost two food um, per that statement. To build a room, you have to do the you have to do an action that gives you the room build action, and then the cost for the room is in the wooden area of the tile below the name, um, and so this will cost one wood. And then next to the cost, there is a placement restriction. So each room, there's a little like diagram of where walls must be in relation to that room. So this room has to have a wall on its top edge. So I could put it here because there are walls on every edge of my cave, but I couldn't rotate it this way because I have no wall at this top edge, which is where these come in. There are some rooms that require more interesting walls. So for example, the tunnel requires um, one wall on either side. So I could do the tunnel like that. Okay. Um, once you have built a room with a wall um, following the placements, you cannot remove that wall. Um, there is a tile layer that lets you remove walls, but you cannot remove a wall that a room is dependent on unless, um, oh, and also if I have built this tunnel and it says I need to have a wall on either side, I can't later build another wall on a side that it does not want unless I have built a room that has an optional wall. So this room, you can kind of see it, it has a white wall on one side, which means that this room, it requires a wall on the top edge, but if you wanted, you could add a wall on this edge, or you could take a wall away from this edge. It doesn't really care. So it kind of gets into your planning, the placements of your caves in a more restricted way, which reminds me of Agricola All Big and Small when you're trying to plan out like how you're going to be really efficient with your animal pens and your houses and stuff like that. Kind of a similar feel, but this is you are required to have walls in certain ways in order to build the rooms, which will help you um, rooms and activating rooms become very important for uh, doing things to get additional resources or goods and attempts to get more rooms because at the end of the game, you get points from the rooms that you've built and from gold. Everything else is useless. So all that matters at the end of the game is the points from your rooms and your gold. And that's it. Alrighty then. Okay. Okay, one thing I noticed, I think there were no um, variable score rooms. There are no variable this. score rooms, that is correct. The only um, rooms that might be somewhat different Steve's finished his grapes now. Uh, the only rooms that are different are there are passive rooms. And so the passive rooms have blue banners on them. And we're going to find these rooms because they're buried in our caves. So as you excavate, you're going to take the tile, the room tile, you're going to flip it, and you're going to add it to the main market. Hey, look, it's a blue room. That's perfect. Um, then that tile can be purchased by anyone. So even though it came from my cave, Steve could purchase it next turn if he wanted. Um, and this is a blue room, so blue rooms will give you points, but they're passive. So they have um, they have things on them that are like when something when an action is triggered, then you get to do this thing. So um, blue rooms are very helpful for kind of like engine building or um, getting bonus resources, etc. So yeah. And you'll, you'll see those come into play. Um, I'm going to put this room back. When you re when I reveal this room, I get plus one food. It's kind of why it's my default. Oh, is that mushrooms under there? Yeah, there's little mushrooms. And you can see them. 
be on the tile. So if you forget mm. where your food is, you can always you can always check. Okay. Here we go. The chat has been talking um, a lot, which is great. Got a good number of people in the chat. We are going to play this game twice. Yes, Eden. Um, so, um, this is, it's got a lot of feeling of Caverna, but it actually, I think, feels a little bit more like Aquabas to me and the tightness of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not two-player Caverna. You could play, you could play Caverna two-player. Um, I feel like this is... This is what it says in the box, which is a, a Caverna experience. It's cave mm -hmm. versus cave. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. They're, it's the same site on both sides. You go first. Great. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so I'm going to do my... Oh, there was a rule I forgot. You can at any time exchange gold, one gold or one fox or one wheat for food. And so as we play the game, we need to spend um, wheat and whatnot... You will see us, or we need to spend food. You'll see us using uh, flax and wheat interchangeably. Like for right now, I'm going to do excavation, and I'm going to pay two food. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and use my food, which I only have one of, and then I'm going to use wheat, so that's two food, and then I will gain a stone, and I'm going to dig out this one, not because I knew that it was there, um, and I'm going to dig out this one. So we now have the digging cave which lets us turn one gold into an excavation action, and the equipment room, which lets us get a bonus action activation, or uh, bonus room activation, when we take the tiles with the two or the three room activations. So. Okay. Um, I'm going to do... Um... I think I'm going to do masonry. Right. No. Um, we're going to play this game twice because we are doing this stream a little early. And because the order in which the rooms come out and the order in which the action tiles get revealed can vary the game drastically. So, um, like for example, masonry coming out in the first round. Um, I'm going to pay a wheat and a food to do one food per worker to place a building, and I'm going to place that food corner. You don't have any corners yet. I don't. Mm hmm. You got to build that wall first. I do have to build that wall. Well, you know what? I'll just I'll build this spinning wheel here. Um, so I will use my one wood. The spinning wheel will go there, um, and then that is my action. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take undergrowth. I think, though, I could take masonry. To I'll take masonry. Screw you. Um, I'm going to take masonry, because getting walls is great. Um, so I get plus one wood. I'm going to activate a room. Um, oh, I would have gotten a food when I dug out that spot. Um... Oh, which which basic resource do I want? I think I want a wood. So I'm going to take another wood for my room activation, and then I'm going to build my wall, and I'm going to build my wall... I think I'm going to build my wall right here. There we go. Okay. Give it turn! I'm going to cultivate. So I'm going to activate one room, using one flax to give me one gold mm -hmm. with my spinning wheel. Using spinning wheel. And then I'm going to get two wheat and one flax. Yeah, very good. And so that's the end of the round. We know because we each have two action tiles and we only get two. So we're going to take all the tiles. We're going to put them back. doesn't matter where they go back. Um, and then I'm going to pass the first player token. And, and then, then we flip the next, next tile. tile. Undermining. Activate Whoa. two rooms or excavate even through walls. Yes, so like I said, normally you can't dig through a wall, but that excavation tile allows you to, which is fantastic. Okay. All right, Steve Arino. Well. The cat is debating if she wants to get in that stack of boxes. The answer is she doesn't. It's very precarious, but if she jumps in it, it's going to be highly amusing. And, uh... Perhaps. There will be duck barks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, let's excavate. Because <clears throat> that needs to happen. 
So uh, I can excavate once, and I can, or I can excavate twice for two food. So let's use both of those wheat that I got when I cultivated. Um, I'll get one stone, and then we'll excavate once, and then excavate twice. Okay. The two rooms that are added. Prospecting site, every time you take the un undergrowth action, you can exchange one food for one gold. And that's, you can only do one exchange. You can't. Correct. Not as many as you want. Um, and then the weaving room, you can turn two flax into two food and two gold. Mm. Interesting. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take... Ah... Uh... I'm gonna take my tears. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take so so tempting to do so many things. Um oh goodness. Gracious. Great balls of fire. Uh, I think I'm going to do the undergrowth. Um, I'm going to do two wood. And then I'm going to activate that room to give me a flax. Steel giant. Darn it. Um, so this is my fifth and a half play of K versus Cave, and this is Steve's second turn. So um, we're going to attempt to be concise with our actions. Uh, so yeah. Oh no, Rodney. Well, we're explaining our actions as we go, so. Um, I'm gonna take, it, it'll be uh, like a, a learning experience, you know, it's it's like a puzzle, it's a mystery. Yeah, you have to figure out what we're doing as we play. Yes. And then there'll be a test on the rules afterwards. Um, it's very straightforward. I'll take the masonry action, so I activate one room, I get a wood or a stone. I'll take a wood, and then I can add one wall. I'm going to add a wall. Oh, that's a good wall place. Yeah, I'm going to add a wall here, and then activate one of my existing rooms. I will use one flax for one gold. To activate using my spinning wheel. Then it is the tip turn. Woohoo! He didn't take what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and get housework. So I'm going to pay two food via my food and a fox. And I'm going to purchase a room and I'm going to purchase the equipment room. <gasps> yes! Tiffany gets the one that lets her take more actions at all times through the rest of the game whenever she takes two or three room activation. What action. a shock! It cost me two wood. I'm going to build it this way because the room requirement wants a roof on the ceiling. It wants a wall on the ceiling. And then um, I can optionally build a wall here later, but I probably won't. Then I'm going to pay a single gold to build a second room because I can do that with this tile. Um... I'm going to build the weaving room. And it wants um, a wall on two sides, so I'm going to put it sideways here because I built this wall here purposely for this room. You can kind of see it. Um, where can I put this so that it's better in frame? Let's do that. There we go. Um, so this one goes on its side because it wants a room on its ceiling and then it wants a room on its side. So that is it. We have both taken our two actions. Um, and so we're going to take all the tiles, we're going to put them back, doesn't matter where you put them back. Tiffany gets first player, mm -hmm. and then we will reveal the last action for the two worker phase of the game. Yes. Which is finishing. Uh, you get one food, and then pay one food per worker to place a room. There we go. You win by cheating Steve. Oh! oh. We're gonna, we should get, we should get cheating Steve buddies. That's what I wanted. I wanted two things when I was at Origins. I wanted a shirt that said, help, I'm Steveless. Because the first thing anyone asked me, like, industry-wise, if they're in the industry as, like, a publisher or a reviewer or just, like, somebody that Steve and I have been interacted with, the first thing they asked me, they'd be like, hey, where's Steve? Like, every time. 
every time. So I need a help, I'm Steveless shirt. And then I need a cheat and Steve hoodie. Because I was told that when Steve's not around, I cheat. And I was like, oh. that's, I mean, I might, I might do some cheating because when Steve's not around, we need to have cheating. But. Wow. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I thought you'd say to people when they'd ask you, where is Steve? You'd be like, wait, where is he? <laughs> that would be pretty good too. No, I just got like, I got sad. I was just like. I wish people would stop asking me this. I just need it on my shirt that I'm like Steveless, so then people would yeah. Don't ask. I'm Steveless. Yes, but the, but the chat wants a cheat and Steve shirt, so I gotta get that art. I gotta get that art done. I'm gonna hire an artist to do a cheat and Steve shirt. We're gonna get on this. All right. Um, so I get to start, which is great because I have a wonderful plan. Oh, oh. Speaking of cheating. What did I do? Your gold token. Oh. Well, it's flipped. That's not that's not horrendously cheating. It's just it's just flipped to the plus ten side. It's fine. Um, hey, look, Stephanie might be our couple name. That's true. It is our couple name. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, I'm going. I am like super low on food. So while I want to excavate two things, I have no more food with which to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do cultivation to get one flax and two wheat and then I get to do a room action activation. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my weaving room and my weaving room, whoops, well hello kitty bitty. Ichi, get down, she's fine. Here, let's swap gates, games for cat basket. Uh, sure, cat basket can just hang out in the corner. There we go. Okay. Cat versus basket. Cat for Ichi, get down. Okay, so I'm gonna activate my weaving room, which lets me turn two flax She's into two honest. gold and two food. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Boot. Yeah, cheating Steve's hard to explain to people that have never played a game with Steve or watched Steve play a game, like because I'll say cheat and Steve, um, and they'll get they'll get confused. Um, we had good friends, Ed Braff, who um, is Edo, who does, he has a YouTube channel, um, and he's Pencil First Games. We used to play with him and his wife constantly um, for game nights, and um, then we moved away, and they no longer, we, could, we no longer played games with them, and they have a new f group of people that they play games with, and um, the new person that they were playing with cheated one day, accidentally, the way Steve does constantly, <sighs> and Emily... Ed's wife yelled, cheating Steve at him. And Edo was like, cheating Steve. And the new person was just like, my name's not Steve. Like, what in the world? And they laughed so hard. Emily messaged me on Facebook after that happened. And she was just like, we miss you guys because we miss cheating Steve. See, if there were shirts, it would be easier to explain. <laughs> Joanna tried to sing the song too. <laughs> I should like I should find somebody to make to make a to make a good version of the song. Also, we now have the cat basket in frame because apparently that's how we're playing. I think Xena went to go outside. Uh, what do you think, cat versus cave? I think she would win. Last night she like laid across Steve's oh board God. and destroyed it. So yeah, all right. She, she excavated better than I did. That's true, she did. But now I have enough food so I can excavate more because I want to see more rooms and get more rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and take the excavation tile now that I have food. I'm going to spend the two food that I got from my weaving room, and I'm going to excavate twice. I'm going to excavate this corner down here, which reveals the storeroom. Oh, the storeroom's great. Oh. The store did room, we not see that last game? I don't think we did. I think it came out at the very, very end. So the storeroom gives you, when you activate it, one wheat, one flax, and one food. And then I'm also going to activate the treasury. Oh, the treasury is so broken. So the treasury, you spend three gold and you get four gold and a food back. Because it just, it like, you have interest, I guess. Um, That's the usury ur room? Yeah. Monsoon Steve room. shirts. We should have Monsoon Steve shirts. All right. Is it now... There's so turn. many shirts that can be made from this show. So this is the last time we're going to be taking two actions. Yes. So the next round, we will be playing three actions. Okay. Um. Let's see. 
<laughs> a diagram explaining Steve's laptop to laptop to cloud to stream setup. That would be an amazing shirt. There's and a lot. Like, there's a lot of squiggles. Just like, it's just like streaming. It's easy. Like that's the text, and then it's just like the massive stupid plan. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. All right. Well, I'm gonna do furnishing, which is I get a food. And then I spend one food per worker, so I'll actually spend a gold and a food to place a room. That's an expensive. You really want to hold on to your flax. Mm. Oh, because you get gold. Digging cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I spend gold, actually. Yes. Um, but I'm going to do one stone and then three wood. And that allows me, when activated, to spend one gold to do excavation. Yes. Which is going to be cheaper in the long run because I won't have to spend food. It is. Oh, no! Don't do that, Charles! Uh, when Zena is added to the family shirt, design a baby mole that should be in her mouth. The family shirt with Zena added has already been done. There's no baby mole involved. Also, it was, it was, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm not gonna have a fourth stream where I have, I have to explain the mole. <laughs> like, the Zena, the well, Zena and the mole situation. She's good at hidden identity games. Uh, yeah. She finds the mole. <laughs> we have that shirt! We can have that shirt! <laughs> Zena's the best at I didn't in games. She always finds her mole. Oh. <laughs> I told the neighbor that we had moles, and she was like, yeah, I've seen them pop up. Like, they move stones and stuff around on us. And I was like, well, Zena's going to solve that problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's the end of the round. We're going to put all the tiles back. doesn't matter where. Steve's going to be the next person to start. And we and flipped the third one, so now we're going to take... with three actions. Wow. Three actions. Expedition. Mm-hmm. Uh, turn five wood or five stone into four gold, or activate three rooms. Yeah, we're getting some really good ones. All right, you start. Holy moly. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's do masonry. <coughs> oh, I forgot to pay for my brain. Oh, this is, this is great. Masonry. So I'm going to place one wall. I'm going to place it here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a wood or a stone. You know you can't excavate unless you take the, the okay. excavator. Then one. I'm actually I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the activate the digging cave. So one gold, I excavate that, revealing the state room. There you go. And then I'm going to place the room there. Oh, the state room. I love the state room. Uh, place the wall. And then I'm going to get either a stone or a wood. And... The thing that I want is probably a stone. Uh, okay, that's it. Mm. Good old digging cave. It's like your best buddy. The uh, the board is designed so um, there's one spot that already has three rooms on it. I guess in the corner here. There's one spot that already has three walls. Uh, and there are a couple rooms like the treasury um, and the stateroom that can have up to four walls. So it'll you'll have a hard time building them in the middle. So your best bet is in one of the one of the three spots that has two walls or in the three wall spot. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take housework. Am I going to take housework? Oh, I don't think I am. Angela's called me out for using the that pun twice about the secret identity games. Well, it's a new stream. Uh, I'm going to do hmm. furnishing. That's right. Plus one you food. can only make each pun once per stream. That's the limit. And then I'm going to spend that three food to build the shelf with one food. And the shelf wants a top wall. So I'm going to do it there. All right. Stupid Reno. <laughs> the tabletop cat basket is wicked. Very cool idea. Yeah. Um, we do the cat basket because otherwise she, like, torments the game. She still some, sometimes kaiju kitties the game. But um, she stays out of our way a lot more often when she has her own little basket. And then she can sit and watch us play. Without getting in our business. Yeah, and she actually, like sits just right when she's laying down to like look out these little holes. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> uh, Eden's kids have discovered a song on Utah YouTube called Jaws and they listen to it nonstop. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mad Bonus says it's either a basket or a John. <laughs> and because and because the chat has John, we get the basket. <laughs> the basket actually lives on the table. It's always on like it's just out of frame. Um but we put it in she wanted to hang with us today, so we put it here. Um, I think I'm gonna do the expedition. So I don't have five wood or five stones, so I'm gonna instead activate three rooms. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get um, get a flax, and then I'm gonna activate my spinning wheel to turn one flax into one gold, and then I'm gonna spend one gold to excavate. excavate. Nice, very nice combo. And that does the wood sorrow. All right, she's just playing with the thing. Oh, All the right. camera can't see out there. I'm gonna take undermining, um, and I'm gonna do the two actions. So the two room actions, and because I have the equipment room, mm -hmm. I actually get plus one, so I get three room actions. <clears throat> so I'm going to activate the shelf to get two flax. Then I'm going to activate the weaving room to spend two flax to get two food and two gold. Um, and then I'll use the cave entrance, and with the cave entrance, I will go ahead and get um, a flax, I feel. My engine is sort of flax dependent, which is an awkward type of engine to have. Um, have you built the flax capacitor? <laughs> there needs to be there needs to be a bonus promo tile called the flax capacitor. Rosenberg, if you're watching, uh, just go ahead and get on that. Flax capacitor. Yep. Yeah. All right, last action. This is a um, this is like a plastic wicker basket, so she doesn't seem to care to destroy it. So we're pretty lucky. Yep. Um, I think I'm gonna cultivate. Hey Nicholas. So one oh, flax. I can announce we're gonna do a bonus stream on Sunday, and we're gonna play an 18xx game with Nicholas. I am so activate. excited. Um, I found a video online that teaches the rules for the thing. Oh, I didn't get um, my food from that. Uh, so yeah, it's we're gonna play an 18xx game on Saturday, and we're going to stream it. Or sorry, Sunday. We're going to stream it Sunday, so you can join us and hang out with us on Sunday. Um, and special guest Nicholas, who is visiting for the 18XX train convention that's here in Portland, because there is a steam engine? It's a steam engine. It is the old, I think, California Zephyr, or like the Daylight Express. It was the train that used to run, um, at the very least, down to L.A., and I think occasionally up to Oregon. And uh, every however many years... Uh, I think for some centennial, it did a tour of all 50 states. Um, so they have to do, there's an organization that takes donations and it takes a while um, to do all the maintenance and everything, but they are taking it out to Eastern Oregon um, just on like a two day jaunt. You know, they've rented some Amtrak cars and they're doing sort of a steam trip out. So I think some folks are going to play 18xx games and watch the train send off. Well, no, so so there's an 18xx convention that, that'll be taking place and you can go play 18xx games. And then if you wanted, you could buy a, pa a part of the package of going to the 18xx convention oh. to go on the train ride oh. for the two-day trip. And I don't think Nicholas is going on the two-day trip. Nicholas, you're in the chat, so confirm or deny but um, you can go on. They so they're gonna. There's gonna be. They're gonna go play 18xx train games, and then they're going to take the train to Bend, Oregon, and probably play train games on the train. We looked into going, but there was like a really massive waiting list, and it's pretty expensive. So, um, but it's pretty cool. I think we might go down and watch it take off. Maybe mm -hmm. it depends on timing. And so. they have the timetable is pretty well defined, so you can like go to one yeah. of those spots that it'll cross the gorge and steam across the bridge and be really pretty. So that's pretty, the view pretty you wouldn't cool. get if you were on the train. This is very true. We'll unless, get better pictures you had than a, them. Unless you had a drone, but that would be kind of... Probably launching your drone off the train seems kind of risky. It's probably something you'd do in like a heist caper or something. Like you launch the drone off and then it flies over to part of the train and then it lets the winch down, and then the jewels get Are lifted you just up. projecting now? Um, I'm going to excavate. I'm sorry. I was, like, debating what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend two food. I'm going to excavate two rooms. I'm going to excavate this one. Sacrificial altar! Um, sacrifice a wood, a wheat, a flax, oh. and a food for three gold. Uh, and I'm going to excavate this one because it's my only other option. Gold vein! 
plus one uh, stone and one gold. And uh, I also get, not a gold, a food. Yeah, you get your mushrooms. Because I found some mushrooms um, in my cave. You also get an explosion. There's no explosion. Yeah, you it's excavate, not Wednesday. You excavate two rooms and you get a boom. Oh, I get, no, but I get a stone. It's also not a Wednesday. Does anybody else know explosion Wednesday? Come on, tell me. All right, anyway. Hanami Koji is so good. All right, uh, that, is, that is that round. Nicholas, if you're in town when the train leaves, we should go we should go watch the train leave. Um Okay. Now I'm gonna start. Um we have a new round. Drift mining. Open. Activate a room and excavate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and do masonry. Uh, I'm gonna do a wood. And I'm going to do a wall, and I'm going to do the wall here. Oh, I can't do the wall there. I'm going to do the wall here. Um, and then I'm going to activate a room. I don't have enough flax to activate my flax engine, so I'm just going to do the cave entrance to get another flax, which will help me activate my flax engine the next chance I get. So, yeah. Steve a turn. Losers. Wozers. <clears throat> Wozers is what my niece, who is six, uses uh, when something amazing happens. I think I'm going to furnishing. Um, so get a food and then one food per worker. So three Which workers. is going to be three, so I have to spend a wheat to place a room and I am going to place. <coughs> the parlor. Um, so Madbone asks, uh, I believe the 18xx stream will be on Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. That is when we are planning on streaming and we're going to stream the whole thing. So it's Steve and I's first 18xx game. Nicholas has kindly agreed to uh, bring it from home and teach it. So uh, we're both super excited. Uh, yeah. Okay, I am going to cry because I realize my plan doesn't work, but it's fine. Everything's fine. It's all good. Um, I'm going to... Hmm. Hmm. Take that just so you can activate three rooms. I'll do that. I'm going to take Expedition. So I get four activations because of my equipment room, but I only have three rooms that I can activate because I can only activate each room once, so it's fine. I'm going to do my weaving room first to spend two flax to get two gold and two food. Then I am going to activate my shelf to get two flax back. And then I'll activate my cave entrance to go ahead and get a wheat. Um, and then it's Steve's turn. Sorry. Charles, I forget. Are you local? Are you in Portland? If so, Cloudcap Games is doing a garage sale where you can sign up to sell games on July fifteenth. Um, Steve and I are gonna are gonna sell a stack there. So. Yeah. All right. Let's activate two rooms. So I'm gonna spend one gold to excavate using my digging cave. The secret chamber. Three flax or a gold. Itchy. Um, and then I will activate my parlor to push all of these back up to one. Mm. Which is a great room. It's a good room. Well, no, it's a parlor room, but... Mm -hmm. Um... Hmm... My last action is around. There's a very specific thing I want to do, but I'm wondering if I should do something else instead. No, I think it makes sense if I do this now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do housework. So I'm going to spend three food in the form of food, um, and then I'm going to build the treasury in this nice little cubby down here that I made for it. Um, and that's going to cost me three gold. And then I have to decide if I want to spend uh, anything else that I have 
to build another room um, because I have some spots where I could put some stuff and I think of what I could afford to build I don't think I want to build it there's one thing I wanted to build and I don't have enough for it so oh Um, or I don't have the right room placement. I could just build that for points. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. I think I'm going to just build the one room. Okay. Super 10! The one tower building the one room. Um, Matt and Amber Fitzgerald says they are moving. They're, they're not moving. They're traveling to Portland in the fall. Um, we have one game cafe in town. It's called The Game Night, Night with a K. Uh, they have a pretty good library and their menu's pretty good. It's kind of hit or miss on if they're busy and there's table space, but you can always sit and play at the bar. It's pretty good. Um, Guardian Games has the largest game selection. It is a warehouse, and their shelves are overflowing with games. They kickstart a lot of stuff as well, so you can often find kickstarters that you maybe missed out on on their shelves, but you have to peruse. You have to, like, stand and dig and methodically go through their shelves because... Just like Verna K versus Cave. Yeah, they sort everything via alphabet. Um, so by title of game, that's how they sort and uh, store their games. But if you like look up, there's their back stock and stuff gets kind of lost and shoved up there. Um, we like uh, Contact Games. It is the most homey game store. Um, and that's actually where I work. And uh, yeah, we it's very pretty... They often have games that are sold out in other places because they're kind of like, they're in the far southeast part of Portland and not a lot of gamers go down that far when there's like five other game stores en route. Uh, so they often are the ones that are the last ones to sell out of certain items. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to get... Cloudcap does have a website, Netflix. but it is, we don't sell games online. So it's just cloudcapgames.com. But we no longer have, uh, we no longer do online web sales. Three flex for two gold. Okay. Using the spinning wheel. Okay, that's it for the round. Right. I'm still learning the actions and the tiles. One thing I do like about this game is the tiles come out relatively randomly based on, or the buildings come out randomly based on what we excavate, but the actions will come out in a somewhat predictable order. Mm -hmm. All right, we now have expansion, which lets you excavate and build a room in the same turn, which is pretty awesome. That is pretty, pretty right. wacky. You start. Um... go for masonry mm -hmm. so get a stone and I'm going to activate my cave entrance to get another stone um, and then I will build a wall and I'm going to try to figure out where I want to build that wall. Mad Bona it's because of the um, too small to maintain a brick mortar and online store. There were only three employees when I was hired and I only do online marketing things like uh, social media and web stuff and occasionally fill in during holidays or vacations for people. So um, having, basically to keep the store open and work hours, everybody is working maximum that they can anyway without having to pay overtime. So to like also have a play, employees pulling games off of shelves when online orders come in and then running to the post office to ship them is, is not worth it. Um, yeah, you can't. You'd have to close the store while they. While yeah, because there's the usually only one person working at a time, unless it's like a big event or a Saturday. So. It's a small, cute shop. Okay. All right, your turn. Okay, I'm gonna take this one again, so you can't. Um, Do you get the extra space when you fill everything or when you excavate everything? It's when you fill everything. Oh, right. I never explained this. So this extra tile here, if you build all the rooms, if you excavate and build a room in every spot on your board, you get this tile, which allows you to build an additional room. So, yeah. 
Um, but I'm going to activate three things. So I'm going to go ahead and do the treasury to spend three gold to get four gold and a food, which still cracks me up. Then I'm, that's one action. Then I'm going to do the weaving room to spend two flax to get two gold and two food. And then I'm going to do the shelf to get two flax. Super turn! My poor engine. Um, let's build, or well, we'll, um, we'll do housework. Cave versus Cave will be out by Gen Con. Uh, it was meant, it is technically, um, I believe, oh, sorry. I don't know why she was working. But um, Cave versus Cave, there was a limited copy that got shipped in for Origins. It should be hitting distribution mid to late July is what I believe I was told. Um, so before Gen Con, but um, yeah, stuff can always change, but yeah. All right. Do you want inside? Are you done? She wants on. She just sat when you're done. Um, Ichi, you're fine. Oh, uh, okay. I will have to build in the second building. Or the second room. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Undermining to take two actions, which is actually three actions. Oh, right! This is four actions for me! Yay! Not that I totally was going to do it. I'll do that. Okay. Then I'm going to take Undermining, which is three actions for me, and I'm going to do my Treasury, which is three gold to get four gold and a food, and I'm going to do the Weaving Room to spend two to get, oh, I flipped that, to do two gold and two food. Um, and then I will do the shelf to get two flocks again. My engine has started. Um, yep. Okay, Steve turn! Your last action. Oh, she's in now. My poor engine. It's almost like all the... Oh, I'm so excited for First Martians. So excited! I'm hoping that we get our copy a little early to get a stream out. We'll see. Um, we pre-ordered because, of course, Steve is obsessed. Um, oh, yeah. I never made it over. Uh, Chevy was running demos of it the entire con, and I just never made it over there. So, bummed. Alright, well, we'll activate a room. Um, so I'll just, I'll activate my parlor, which pushes these all up, and then I will excavate the space, which is the retting room, which is it, when you get one to three flax, also get a food. That's, I need that one, but you took the housework that lets me build two rooms. Oh, but I do get a food. All right, I'm going to go ahead from, and uh, my mushrooms. do expansion. So I'm going to go ahead and excavate this room, which is the dungeon. Ooh. Every time you build a wall, you get two gold. A little late, but that's all right. Um, and then I'm going to pay five food, because I just have food, uh, to build a room. And I'm going to build the state room, which costs seven gold. And that's the room. Yeah, getting getting actions and buildings before Tiffany does is a challenge. Well, because uh, this is my f fifth play, fifth and a half play. So, did you flip the tile? Breach. Breach. Remove a wall to gain two stone, three food, and gold. It's pretty good. Alright. Uh, Chad, Origins Vlogs. Um, yes. So at Origins, they do not put tablecloths on the free play or um, play space tables. You have to provide your own. So if you want to go play in free play or open play, um, or if you want to do an event and you rent tables to run some sort of play event like D&D &D or like uh, Death Kingdom or any of those, you have to bring your own tablecloths. 
So, yep. Also, the vlogs are still coming. I am editing them. I'm just kind of catching up on, like, things now that I'm back in the States. But I am slowly working my way through the vlogs. Yeah. Tomorrow is going to be... Not in the States, sorry. I'm back in the state of mind of being at work. Um, but tomorrow is all about editing, so... Oh, and furnace quotes, because we're getting a new furnace. All right. All right. I start... I'll come home from work, and I want a written timesheet about all the time spent on editing. On editing vlogs? Yeah. Okay. It's just going to be a giant drawing of a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I need to do some specific things. So I'm going to do this one to get four actions. So I'm going to spend two flax to get two gold and two food. And then I'm going to go ahead and do treasury to get to spend three gold to get four gold and a food. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and do the stateroom to get a flax and a gold. Actually, no, that's silly. I could instead do the shelf to get two. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. And then um, I'll just do the stateroom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. All right, let's do undermining. I'm going to activate two rooms. So I'll activate my flax, <laughs> straw, wood, and food. Uh, Chad, all of the music that I use in my vlogs, I reference the artists for the songs in the doobly-doo, um, so the description of the video. Uh, I purchased that music from those artists, but um, I link their SoundCloud pages and you can listen to their music for free on SoundCloud. And so then I will parlay that back. Your turn. There's a beam coming in from... Oh, it's the blinds. Can you go close to us? I was like, where is this beam coming from? Oh, the cat, of course. Those are her cat lasers. No. Um, okay, I'm going to... Did I get it? Yes, that was, that was the source. Um... Oof. I think I'm just going to activate to do two food to clear out my last two things. Aha! Stall. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess so. It's your turn. Downforce. Why does downforce sound familiar? Who's doing downforce? What is downforce? Vaguely remember something about downforce, but I can't remember what it is. Racing game. It was a Formula One racing game about something. But from who? I don't know. Oh! From Restoration Games! That's right! I almost got a demo of that, but instead I went and uh, played Sentient. But yes, Restoration Games is, is uh, restoring downforce, and there's footage of it in the vlog um, because I got to look at it, but I didn't I didn't play it, so it'll be coming um, it'll be coming soon that vlog. So, hey, right, stupid turn. That's what it is. Um, let's do masonry. So we'll put a wall down, we'll get a stone, and then activate a room. Um, I will almost certainly activate this room to get three more gold. And I will put a wall somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, the cat twitched. What did it say? You can you can go. I'm just for the room for the wall flexing. Yeah, but you took the tile I wanted because I wanted to build a wall. Gosh darn it! Gosh darn it! Holy smokes! And you took the two tile because the wall there. you're smart. Um, the two action tile. So. 
guess there's nothing else for me to excavate. I'll go ahead and take undergrowth to do plus two wood um, and a room activation. And I'm going to do the treasury to spend three gold to get four gold. Hmm. Don't want to do that. I actually get more gold if I do the other one. So I'm going to do flax to spend two flax to get two gold and two food. Oh, so there's a tile at the end of this round. Whoever has the most gold is the only person who can use that tile, and Steve is almost there. Steve has almost beaten me on quantity of gold. Hopefully he buys something. Oh. Is... Is that the end of this round they'll get the last tile? I believe it's whoever you start the round with. Or it might be when you actually take the tile. I don't know. I, I think it said only the player with the most gold. Well, but when is the most gold determined? Is it when you take the tile? It might be. That's the question. Does not say. There's not an FAQ on that tile. Okay, I think then it does. It says on the tile, so we'll have to find out. Um, I'm gonna do cultivation though, so I'm gonna parlor. Oof! I want to play tramway so bad. Parlor, and then I will get an additional two wheat and one flax. All right, end of the round. No. Yes. Darn it! I think you did it to take it. Renovation. More gold than the opponent. So when you take it, you need to have more gold than the opponent. And you start. So if you took it right this second, you could do it. Okay. Alright, you start. I could... So this is the final round. We each get four actions. And I'm going to try and whip Steve so the AP doesn't take over. Come on. <laughs> we would a plan. Execute your plan. I have work. So one food per dwarf, that's four now, right? Yes. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I can place a building. Um, oh, darn it. Never mind. Really? Never mind. Oh, do you not have enough stone? I don't have enough stone. So. Bummer. Um, yeah, I'll expand expedition. So activate three rooms. Um, we'll go one, two, three, four. Activating the altar to get up to twelve gold. Mm -hmm. um, then I will do one stone from my cave entrance, and then I will do. Come on, come on. AP. Steve's got AP. I'll just. My brain hurts. It's a good sign. Uh, yeah, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's not a rose from bearing unless your brain hurts. 
Um, I'll just probably work out to do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do masonry because you now have definitely too much gold. Um, and I'll activate a room and I'll do my pay three gold to get four gold and a food. I'm gonna get a wood and then I take the last wall because they're limited. And I will put this wall here. Right here. No, I want them here. Okay. And then Steve's turn. Um, I can't remember. The Spill the Yards gets announced in stages. I know they're announcing something right before Gen Con. Um, I hope they don't announce them soon because we now have Raiders of the North Sea and we have Exit, um, both of which to do streams or playthroughs with, but I'm trying to get through the Origin releases first. Um, so there's that. But, um, yeah. Like, for example, Sunday, we're doing the 18xxx stream. <laughs> Too many X's. <laughs> um, and then... <laughs> Tune in Sunday. Uh, and then Tuesday, we're going to play Lignum with John, which is super exciting. John's actually coming over once this stream is done to do a pregame of Lignum so that we all know how to play it before we stream it. Um, I will do the... So, yeah. Gold main. So I will spend five gold. So I go from 12 down to seven. Your turn. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the build two walls. Build two buildings. Rooms. Rooms. Um, we're both wrong. Uh, so I'm going to pay four food. Um, and I'm going to build the... I think I'm going to do the storeroom and... I really want to build the dungeon, but I can't. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do the storeroom and the stall. So, um, two wood and a gold for the storeroom, which wants a corner. And then the stall is going to be a wood and a gold for it. Yep. Okay. Oh, and I have to pay an extra gold to do the second round. All right. um, I will do furnishing. I will get one food and then pay one food per worker to place the dungeon. So that is uh, three stone. One, two. Um, huh. I'm going to do expansion, even though I can't excavate anything, and I'm going to spend two gold to build mm -hmm. the processing site because it's five Free, points, it's five points yeah. and you don't have to pay for anything so i'm gonna put it in this corner it's the last making a building action yes it's getting cutthroat y'all it is um well, oh also nicholas will be there for the lignum stream on tuesday I forgot about that. I believe for Nicholas is going to be there for the Lignum stream on Tuesday. My last action, I really should just activate. Let's see. That would. Breaching does not help me, although I could breach that. I will undermine. So I will do two rooms. So I will get a stone and a gold for activating my gold vein. And then I will spend one flax to get yeah, one more gold. On would you like that extra landing spot? <laughs> All right, so that's me. All right. Um, well, Steve took the one that mattered to me, I, mean, I guess. That's my MO. So I'm going to take cultivation to get a flax <laughs> and two wheat. Um, and then I'm going to activate my uh, weaving room. Yeah, to get... 
to spend two flax to get two gold and two food. And that's four actions! And we're done! That's the game! Um, so now we're going to score, and then we're going to reset up, and I'm going to do a quick rules explanation again, that's much faster, and then we're going to play again. Yep. So, Nutters, you've made it to the second game. Alright, here we go. So, the tiles, we can all just, like, flip and sort them out later. Um, then, um, the gold that you have is, is just worth points, and, and then just... all the shields on your room are worth points, um, and all your other goods are useless. So those rooms will just move off. Yes. So, um, I am going to do math now. Yay. So I just pull my rooms off because they don't... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. 50. 56. Oh my goodness. Did you get, did you remember your gold? Yeah. Okay. 45 plus 5. 50 plus 6 mm -hmm. on my gold. And that's Caverna Cave versus Cave. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um let's do a reset and talk about how we feel about it while we reset. I think I need to just take a walk around the block to cool off. Do you really? No. Okay. Uh, no, it's a... It's your second game. What do you think of it from a second game standpoint? You know, it's funny. Because the rooms can still come out in, like, a different order, knowing the rooms is helpful, but your strategy does need to be different. Yeah, your strategy has to react on what comes out. And, I mean, it also even depends on how quickly players excavate. I mean, they're pro people. you're probably going to excavate um, as much as you can, but still, if the players are slow at excavating, those high point rooms aren't going to come out. Um, yeah. They find that interesting. And those, you know, that dungeon, which is worth 11 points, that could come out in the first excavation of the game, which I think is cool. Which actually, it happened in a game that Angelus and I played. The dungeon tile came out almost immediately, and it's um, every time you build a wall, you get two points. So for the rest of the game, I just built walls for literally no reason, and I kept getting two gold. And then I had a tile that I, I had the tile that let me spend three gold to get four gold um, and a food. And then the breach action came out where you could, like, destroy walls to get gold and other stuff. And so I was just building walls to get gold, turning gold into more gold, and then destroying the walls to get more gold so I could build more gold walls later to get more gold. So this is why Angelus doesn't play with you anymore. Well, it's also because he went back to Australia. So that, 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 that might be why. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm close to booking a plane ticket. I'm just saying. Um, oh, so Vast! I... We, uh, sorry, Eden, you just said you still need to learn Vast. We will be doing a stream of Vast at some point. <laughs> we have so many, our stream schedule is so very full. Expect more weekend streams because we just, we have so many things to play through before Gen Con. Um, we have some titles that are coming out at Gen Con that I have been given or we are being sent to play. Um, so, yeah. Like. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah, we are gonna... I, yeah. I'm looking forward to our Thursday bonus streams being... continuing to be pretty much every week. Oh, yeah. We're gonna... Every Thursday, if we're in town, we will be streaming something because we have such a large queue. Um, so, yeah. Much excited. Much excited. Oh, oops. Oof. I, I think I like this more after my first, after my second play. Yeah? Like, it is... That was my fifth play, and I am really excited about it. I'm kind of, um, I'm from, I'm, it just reminds me a lot of Akbas, of All Creatures Big and Small mm -hmm. from Agricola, which is one of Steve and I's favorite um, two-player games. It also, one thing, it feels like a very streamlined... Uh, version of, of Rosenberg design, uh, it feels a little less fiddly than All Creatures Big and Small, which I haven't played in a while, but for example, I don't find I was forgetting to replenish resources on the Not uh, having track. to that, restock that sort of stuff thing. is really great. Um, hey, Nerfenstein, 
You did miss it, but we're playing two games tonight because we started so early. So, uh, I'm going to put the cat basket down because I don't really want it here unless she's here. Um, so, we just did another setup. If you want to watch how to set up the game, you can go to the beginning of this stream to, if you're coming in late, to see the setup um, rules and whatnot. But we go through setup and I also describe how to play. But a really rough overhead is we're going to be drafting these action tiles. One new one will be appearing. Oh, let's change this. We're going to be drafting these action tiles, and one new action tile will be revealed every round that will be available to draft. For the first three rounds of the game, we're going to be taking two actions each, alternating, and then the next four rounds, we're going to be taking three actions each, and then at the final round, we're going to be taking four actions each when this tile is revealed. When you draft the tile, you may take all, um, all or none of the actions depicted on the tile in any order you choose, and they're kind of standard Rosenberg spot uh, tile activations where some of them have or statements, um, some of them give you things, some of them allow you to activate rooms, which is a new one, because as we build rooms in our caves, some of them will activate to give us various things, um, like more resources, uh, or gold, and gold is the only thing that matters for points at the end of the game, and the rooms. Every room is worth a certain number of points at the end of the game, and gold is worth one point per gold, and that's the only way to get points in the whole game. So, um, in addition to drafting the tiles, we're going to be trying to gain resources to build the rooms that will get us points, and the rooms have placement restrictions uh, as to where they can be placed in regard to the cave walls. So, um, different rooms need different supporting walls, similar to the room in our house that needed a supporting wall that a previous owner removed. Uh, you can't do that in this game. Uh, it's against the rules. Should have been against the rules for them. Unless you have permission. Unless you have a permit, which they clearly did not have as the ceiling is now sagging. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. Um... <laughs> No, you're sweet. Like a tea that I left, like a tea that I left seeping too long. Ooh, speaking of which, but it do has you want honey in it? Do you want some cider? It's still been. Um, I need food. Ah, oh, that's true. That's true. Myself. That's true. Also, um, Nutters, I love your Gizmo account on Instagram for your bird. If you're not, if you're on Instagram and you don't follow Nutters Play on Instagram, you should be. Uh, she's great content and videos and pictures. And then also, I don't know Gizmo's account, but her new bird, her cockatoo, has an account and does a super adorable video clips and pictures of Gizmo with games, and I love it. And it makes me want a bird again, even though we just can't have a bird. Um, but it makes me want a cockatoo. I had a cockatoo when I was young, so, yeah. Anyway. Um, bird's the word. Can you give me my coffee? Oh, wait, no, I'll get it, because I went first last time. So Steve will go first. So we're going to play um, a whole nother game of Cave versus Cave, so you all can see kind of how um, how the room tiles and the order in which they come out can very much uh, change the feel of the game, in addition to what action tiles come out uh, at which phases of the of the game. But we're going to play a little faster this time, yep. um, because Steve shouldn't be AB prone. Nope. Uh, I'm going to excavate, so I'm going to pay two food and excavate twice and get a stone. And I will excavate these two tiles. And I will reveal rooms, because when you flip over, uh, you reveal rooms. And I oh, yeah. reveal the gold vein um, and the furniture workshop. Very nice, very nice. The furniture workshop lets you turn wood and flax into gold, and the gold vein just gives you um, stone and gold. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do housework. And I'm going to do a food and a flax to spend to pay the one food per worker. And the worker corresponds to what phase of the game we're in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and Oh, pay. we didn't flip the second. Oh, we didn't. I was like, why do I have not have options? We have undermining. That's great. Okay. Um, I could have excavated if I wanted, but that's fine. I'm going to do housework. Oh no, I can't do what I wanted to do. Okay, I undo that. <laughs> um, and I will excavate um, to get this one, which is the weaving room. 
and I revealed the food, so I get the food. Yay! Super turn. I'm getting my coffee. Um, I'm gonna do undermining <coughs> or undergrowth. Sorry, it lets me activate a room. The only one I have is my cave entrance, but also get two wood. So I'm gonna get two wood, um, and then I'm gonna get one flax. Tiff's turn. So one of the reasons we don't have tablecloths on our table is because um, we're both messy, <coughs> and the cat tends to to vom on the table, which is delightful. Um, so my wallet has never been the same. Um, uh, I don't I don't like to do laundry. Also, so I we had a tablecloth for the stream that we did with Angelus for brightness reasons on the table, and I just took it off before we streamed here, and I was like, wow, it's so lucky we never got any spills on it. And I put it on my suitcase, which is still in the living room, because it's full of laundry that needs to be washed. And I went and got my coffee, and as I was moving my coffee, I splashed and spilt coffee on the white, pristine tablecloth. So, why we um, can't have nice things. If that tablecloth isn't covered in coffee, it's really nice when you're playing a game that's mostly, like, a white or light or bright components. Because with the black table, it throws off the, like, white balance of the camera. Yeah. Um, so for certain games that are very bright, the white tablecloth is great. For this game where the cave is mostly dark, um, doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Okay. Also, you've never played Caverna? Netters, get back up here. <laughs> Actually, we'll be down there. Give us ten hours. We'll be there. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and take Cultivation, and I'm going to do a Flax and two, uh, Wheat. And then to activate a room, we're going to activate the only room I have, which is cave interest, and we're going to wood. Sweet. That's the round. Um, but it's fine that you didn't play Kabruna. It's fine. We'll still be friends. We'll fix it. It's all good. All right. First player token goes to Tiffany. It's an expensive game, and if you don't have somebody in your game group that already owns it, um, and you're not sure you're going to like it, it's kind of a really expensive investment Yeah. for Kabruna. It's also an expensive time investment to learn how to play it and do it. So yeah, your first yeah. your first game if you're playing with people that already know um, can be a challenge, it's, especially if it's a large player count game. Like you want your first game of Caverna to be the smaller player like count three, game, four yeah. players max. Uh, and then once you know it, you can play that massive seven player game of Caverna. I think have we topped out at five? We played a five player game, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to vote a thing, but I can't yet. It's very interesting. It's so different, this game, because we can't, we can't do this, the, yeah. And I, I, didn't we play Caverna with you, John, three player, to kind of like make up for the fact that your first game was seven player? I feel like we did that. I'm going to do excavation. I'm going to pay two food. And I'm going to excavate here, which is the wood storeroom. Every time you take one room action, you go to wood. And we excavate here, which is this sacrificial altar. Oh wow! And now that I've played, I know that um, what's it called? Masonry is going to come out next round. Infant Batman armor. Halloween is is months away. I'm very curious, uh, Angela. On on. Oh oh yes. Okay. I'm, aware. I'm gonna do furnishing. I'm gonna get a food. And then pay, um, is that what I want to do? Yeah. I don't know what you want to do. Only you I'm going to get a food and then pay one food for workers. So that's one food and then one flax, sadly. Uh, but I'm going to place the weaving room here in the corner. And it costs two wood. So, so I, can pay, right I can pay two flax for two food and two gold. Which is pretty amazing. That was the crux of my engine on last game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take housework. I'm going to pay the two food in the form of wheat to go ahead and build um, the wood storeroom, which I'm going to put in this nice little corner right down here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, I have to pay for it, which is a stone. And then... I'm going to cry that we don't have walls yet. It's so depressing. I'm going to go ahead and pay a gold to go ahead and build the, um, oof. Huh. 
Hmm. I'll do the grindstone. I can't do the grindstone. I have to, I'll do the shelf for a wood. All right. Well, speaking of taking the build or taking the room that you really wanted, I'm going to do undermining. And activate two rooms, so I'm gonna do one flax from my cave entrance, and then spend two flax to get two food and two gold. Oh yeah, I've seen the uh, so. It's un undermining, I'm undermining your stretch. No, you're just trying to copy what I did last game. No, I'm undermining. No, your... you're copying. I'm it's very different. It's very different. You're copying. And masonry. Yep. And you start. Do I start? You do start. I do, don't I? Oh, I totally just screwed my whole game by putting that there. Retcon! <laughs> yes, your grandson's Wonder Woman costume is flippin' adorable. Let's excavate twice, so two food. We still haven't seen that yet. We have to find the time when we're not playing games. And then which will be never. warehouse. And I will get a food from... The mushrooms. I don't that were like there. this camera. I wish I could like trim the camera so it's like angled. Which camera, Bob? This one. So like I could cut, I could make it a shape that wasn't a square. Are you having weird arms? There you go. There There's you go. your arms. It. Oh wow, that arm's short. Uh, okay. Oh, I have two hands. That's not gonna work. I have one really long arm. Yeah. I have one really short arm. <laughs> and I have arm. a short arm. We both have short arms. Yeah. Okay, it's your turn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, well, I have to take masonry. Yeah, you do. But I can't use it yet. I hate my life. Um, I'm gonna do undermining. I'm gonna do this one. Equipment room! Oh! The cat has emerged. I guess I have to put the cat back in her head. There you go. There's your basket. You gonna get on your basket? Okay. Um, I'm gonna do undergrowth. So, activate a room. And get two wood. Um, I guess I will just activate. I probably shouldn't be drinking cold brew at eight o'clock at night. But... Yeah, it's fine. Get flax, right? Are you giving me flax? I give no flex. Okay, I'm gonna do masonry, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and build the wall here. Uh, I'm gonna activate my, ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get, I think I want to get, the cat's in like a null space. It's kind of <laughs> trippy. The cat's in null space. Oh, their ears are up. Um, <laughs> uh, what do I want to do? I want to activate my shelf to get two stone. When I activate a one room, I get a wood, and then I'll go ahead and get a... I mean, I, I knew cats could fit in tiny spaces, but that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, the null space. The null space. <laughs> it's adorable. Um, slash cat, slash wall. I think I'll just take another stone, and then I put the wall there already, so I'm done. All right, that was the last two action round. Boop, boop, boop. Um, three action round. You start, and we have an expedition. Tiffany gets to activate three rooms. I mean, if I want to. I don't have to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, okay, uh, so now we have to pay three food to build a room. Which is important. Which is important. Hmm. 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 Uh, I'm going to.
gonna go ahead and take. Is the junction room any three resources that aren't alike? Yep, you got it in one. Just I wasn't sure if it referred to like I don't know wood only or something, like wooden tokens only. But... Yeah, yeah. No, it's any resource. So it could be food or gold. Yes. Although it would be dumb to use gold because it's. Yes. Well, yeah. If it's at the end of the game, the other resources aren't worth it. I guess you could spend one gold, two other things to get. Your mom is it? Um. Okay. I'm going to do housework. Um, I'm going to spend my flax and wheat for that. And I'm going to go ahead and build the equipment room. Ha ha ha! For two wood. If it makes you feel better, I'm like almost completely broke. Should I put more soft things in your in your basket? Do you remember when we bought you that bed, that cat bed that's like super expensive, um, that sits over there and collects dust? So I started putting my roller derby stuff on it. We could take some of the stuffing out of that cat bed and put it in your basket. <laughs> Would you like a softer basket? The bottom of this basket is wood, so I don't know why she um, gravitated towards this basket when it has a wood bottom. But then it has now it has quilting batting in it and she loves it, so. Alright. One food and then one food per worker to place a building. Oh, I forgot to tweet that we were still playing. Let me do a retweet really fast. The tabletop cat basket idea is wicked. <laughs> I love it. Alright. Um. You're halfway. I'm building the warehouse. I was trying to find the building. Uh, okay, so two wood. And that allows me to turn two food into a wood, a stone, a flax, and a... Uh, Wheat. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do... It's so funny because I do that, but there's no reason to. Grr. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do cultivation. For two wheat and a flax, and then whenever I activate a room, I get a wood, so I'll activate a room to get a wood. Um, and the room that I activate will be my shelf. Is that only when you activate a single room at a time? Yeah, so okay. actually, if I activate my shelf to bring my wood up to a two, I activate a room, so then my wood's a three. Nice! There we go. That's two. That was a weird sneeze. I was trying to be quieter. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, it's actually it was for the viewers, not for you. Oh well, I know I appreciate that you were nice to the viewers. There we go. There we go. That's that's reasonable. Okay, right. stupid turn. I just tweeted that we're still playing. So if you're on Twitter and you want to retweet that, that'd be cool. Also, um, I remember somebody was I forget who was talking about um. Somebody was talking about. So let's do that. Let's do two stuff. food for a this, um, and this, and this, and a this, and then saboteur. Somebody stone. was talking about saboteur. Steven, I love saboteur. It was one of the first games um, that we played together, and I got things. That was. I think that saboteur was one of the first games I played on board game arena with yeah. with a big group of people. I think that was the first time I'd done like a hangout with you know ten people all playing saboteur on board game arena, and it was completely nuts. So I have two. Oh, let me change cameras. So I have two saboteur promo postcards, and I want to mail them to somebody. So, um, you can play this with Saboteur or Saboteur 2, which is not Saboteur Duel. Um, and basically, you place the postcard in the labyrinth while you're setting it up in a specific spot, 
and the first person who it's it's called the wardrobe and it like sits in the middle of the grid and there's like some clothes stuff in it um but the first player who connects um a start card or the start card to the wardrobe must exchange your rolled card immediately so you put your old roll your old roll card back and take a new roll card the one that was set aside so um you you change roles, so it's kind of interesting because if you are playing with less saboteurs, and I start as the saboteur and then I connect to this, I could become not the saboteur, which is pretty sweet. So if you would like, I have I it's a postcard. I will I will put a, a post stamp on it because I love writing postcards, and I got them because I was gonna send them to my nieces, but like I didn't realize that it was a thing for the game, so there's no place to like write on the postcard like there's just the rules explanation and then like where to send it so um i'm gonna send it to one of you so um if you would like this one of these saboteur postcards to add into your playing i have another one that's for me um go ahead and send me an email with your address uh at the one tar at gmail.com and explain to me um how, why you like saboteur the game, I guess. And if there's more than two people that enter to win a postcard, I will um, I will pick the the best reason why Saboteur is a good game. So there you go. Um, anyway, okay. Steve went to blow his nose and let the dog in. Um, all right. So now it's my turn. Yes, it's my third action. Okay. So did you see these? They're super cool. You, like, hook it into the board. Oh, what? There's, like, marks to show you where you're going to lay the cards over. Oh, cool. Isn't that great? Yeah. That's such a genius that idea. That is a good idea. So, whoever is at Mayfair that came up with this, you're a genius. Please do this in more games, and I will happily mail out hundreds of postcards for you, <laughs> because I love sending postcards. Mm -hmm. Just add a place where I can write a note. That's all I ask. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I get to take a turn... My, my engine is suffering from malnutrition, which is so much depressing. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take undergrowth. Um, and I'm going to get two wood. Uh, and then I'm going to activate my cave entrance to get a stone. Uh, do I want to do a stone? Yeah, I want to do a stone, which gives me another wood. Okay. Steve, a turn. Steve, a turn to feel the burn. Okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go on an expedition and activate three rooms. I'm going to use my two flax. Super obvious. I've had coffee. To get <laughs> two food and two gold. And then I'm going to activate the warehouse and turn that two food into a flax, a hay a stone, and a wood, and then I will get one more flax so I can do it again. Hey look, you're copying the strategy that I had last game. Almost exactly. It's a coincidence. It is a coincidence. And that's the round! Okay. But I, you start. I said this when we were playing last you night. I love the flow that this game has, which is we each it's take really tiles, well. the tiles go back, we flip over one, the start token goes to the other player. It's such like, a good way to do two-player worker placement. And because a lot of the complexity is in these rooms and these actions, um, but not in the rules, I think I would feel comfortable using this as kind of an introduction to the, like, Uwe Rosenberg type games. Because the main, you know, the, there's, the scoring rules aren't complex, mm -hmm. the, um, like the flow of the game isn't complex. There's not a lot to remember to need to do. It's all just uh, actions and rooms. Uh, do I start? You do. Yeah. But yeah, no, I agree. I like this as a as a beginner Uwe board game. I mean, patchwork is really good, but patchwork doesn't really teach you the like Rosenberg flow of like how to pick up stuff and build stuff and get stockpiles and then trade stuff in yeah. for other things to like build that flowy engine that you roll out with. And I used to use um, All Creatures Big and Small as the the mechanic for teaching that with like Agricola. 
But I think that this one, I think that this is a little bit more streamlined and a little bit, it's easier to grok, it's easier to understand out of the bag. So, yeah. I'm going to do housework. I didn't watch the full Man vs. Meeple video. Um, it's just going to be, are we in three? Yeah, so one, two. But I think the Man vs. Meeple guys... Three. David and or, Jeremy, um, actually, we have different opinions on games. Uh, our tastes in games alter. don't align One. frequently. Uh, I think, I think, if I am going to align with the taste <sighs> of somebody on that channel, I think my tastes align more with David generally. I think um, they tend to enjoy more so, thematic game, less more thematic games, less like heavy. Euros and like stuff like that. Um, I do have some criticisms of this game, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, but and this is my sixth play, so I feel perfectly confident giving criticisms now, even though you know Rosenberg probably played it a hundred times. But after my sixth play, I'm allowed. It's yeah, it's not um, quite a first impressions. Yeah, um, and I was also being sarcastic, like. It kind of annoys me. There are some reviewers that will play a game maybe one, three times and then have, like, these criticisms. And I'm like, you know, the designer played this, like, a hundred times. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should play it a bit more before you. <laughs> yeah, and there are totally sometimes criticisms of games that do kind of fall out once you've played it more than once. Yeah, um, and um, my thoughts of this game were not that great my first play, if we're honest. Um, I was kind of like, ooh, I don't know. But they're getting, they're getting a little better. <laughs> Sorry, Xena went off with somebody. And also, I just want to say, that's not, I'm not saying that Man vs. Meeple plays it, like, once or twice. I don't know how many times they played it. They could have played it 50. I'm not making any judgment on them when they're playing. Um, the only thing that I will say versus Man vs. Meeple is that uh, my taste, from watching the reviews of other games that I know I've enjoyed, our tastes just don't align. So, um, they very rarely align, I, I believe. Like, if you watch, like, their top... Most anticipated games from Essen or Gen Con or Origins list, and you watch my list, like, there's very, very different overlaps. Like, there's a lot of, there's not a lot that syncs up, but um, when we do sync up, I believe it's David that is interested in the same stuff that I'm interested in. So that's my only, that's on, my only, like, I guess, comment on the Man vs. Meeple review that, that didn't like this. Um, so yeah, okay. It's my turn. Steve has stolen my engine. I have to come up with something else. Um, I have an abundance of wood and stone, so I should probably use that to some advantage. Um, I'm going to excavate because I need room. So I get another stone. I'm going to spend two food. Um, and I'm going to excavate the dungeon and this room. Which is the state room, of course. Alright, now it's Steve Turns. I should probably go on an expedition. Okay, so we'll do two flax for two gold and oh, two yeah. food. Angela, our Rhino Hero Super Tower was so good. It was so amazing. Um, and, then... and I'm so annoyed that I don't have footage of it collapsing. But basically, we were playing, and we had, like, a whole bunch of people watching, because, like, it was... We had run out of all the cards, and we were... It was getting extreme. And um, one of the booth staff that was helping with the Hava booth tucked in a chair further down the eight-foot table, and when they tucked it in, they hit the leg of the table without realizing it, and they caused it to collapse on the one side. Um... And I wasn't filming when it collapsed, so that was that was sad. But it was a super fun game. I really like Rhino Hero Super Battle. It's it's great fun to the Rhino gold. Hero line. Um, how they do multi height walls gold. is fantastic. Gold. My only criticism of the Rhino Hero Super Battle is I don't like the movement rules. You roll a die to move, um, and so um, Kimberly and uh, oh no, why can't I remember her name? Ah. 
Kimberly and, oh, I can't remember her name and I feel horrible. Um, they kept rolling negative ones, which means go back down, or like ones. So they never got very high up the tower, whereas um, the other person we were playing with kept getting like twos and threes. They would jump up the tower. So using a die for movement kind of stinks. But yeah. Probably house rule that, but All right. still. But we manually collapsed the half of the tower that did not collapse when the chair bumped it. That was pretty fun. <laughs> It collapsed very nice, very controlled collapse. Okay, it's my turn again. I'm, like, definitely caffeinated, and I'm just like, let's just talk with chat. Let's just hang out. <laughs> I can play. I can chat. I can do my turn. I can do I everything can talk. I want. We're good. I can We're say good. things and read We can chat. do stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I can do anything. I'm amazing. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm also very caffeinated. <laughs> Hi. Um, oh, you put gel in your hair today. I was like, oh, I can, I can't, I can't mess your hair up as easily as I normally can. Um, wow, I have a lot of stone and wood. All right, I'm gonna get a stone. I'm gonna activate the shelf to get two wheat, which gives me another wood, and then I'm gonna build a wall right there. Also, I forgot when I excavated that spot, I should have gotten a food. There we go. Oh, bridge. Camera. Chatting equals helping Steve win. <laughs> <laughs> there, it only it only takes a, one e to turn chatting into cheating and also remove a t and just depends how you spell it really i don't know if you're cheating do you really care how it's spelled <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn come on is it it is your is turn. It my turn come on i've been talking this whole time let's go let's go Kitty Bitty, you have the hardest life. She does. Just lays in a box all day. It's activating. Gets petted. Yeah, hi. Ooh, your head's a little warm. How you doing, Stevie Bitty? Oof. Actually, no. I'll just, I'll just cultivate. Easy one. I'll get a flex. Does it start with it? Yeah. I think EG wants to All right. Um, and then... I think I will actually just... Hi. You will get dinner when you get dinner. Don't you worry your little adorable head about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. Well, hello. Yeah? Yeah, hi. Uh, oh. <laughs> I will pay one hay to get one, two, three food. That's what I needed. Okay, um, I'm going to... Do furnishing? Furnishing. I'll get a food. I'll spend three food in the form of two and one to build a room and I'm going to build the furniture workshop down here for one wood and two stone and that's the that's round. There's not there's not a lot of room to, to mess up in this I will say. Uh, Oh, Chad, bedtimes are overrated. Also, my hands are weirding me out. We're gonna just do this. Uh, okay. <gasps> the cat's here again. I like that the cat hides behind him. Um, okay. I, I still like that the dog started using that dog bed once we put another dog bed on top of it. No, she would use the big no, dog she, bed. No, she would, but, but I mean, But she noticed like... she doesn't play with that one anymore. Yeah. Because it's on top of a thing. We had two dog beds. Zena would play with one as a toy and then lay on it occasionally. And then she would very rarely lay on the bigger dog bed we bought her that is impossible for her to move. And then we stacked them on top of each other once because I was vacuuming. And then she, now she lays on them. Like, she'll lay on the double stacked dog bed. And she no longer plays with the dog bed. But if I took them apart, I'm sure she it would just, do it that. Would, yep. So, it's great. 
She's on a tower of dog beds. That's her preferred place. Uh, well, I have a thing I want to do. Yeah, I think maybe I should just do that. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the expedition to activate mm -hmm. three rooms. Which is now four rooms. Oh yes, because I have that thing. I yeah. keep forgetting I have that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and activate my cave entrance. Actually, no, I'm gonna do my shelf to get two flax. And then I'm going to do two wood. Was that, did I have seven wood or six wood? I can't remember. Maybe I don't have that camera up for chat to help me. Uh, I'm gonna do two wood and a flax to get three gold. And then I'm going to, um, so it's that room. That one's passive. I already used that one, so all I have is cave entrance left as an option. Um, I will cave entrance a flax. Steve Jarrett. Well, I think I need I need to excavate. Pick one. Do I? No. Speed of turns. Speed of turns. I'm gonna masonry. Dang it. Um, I am gonna activate my cave entrance to give me a stone. Um, and then I get another stone. And then I do a wall. There you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do excavation to do two wheat to excavate here, which gives us our prospecting site. And I'll excavate here, which gets our big house. Ooh. Um, which means the one that I'm digging for is either this one tile up to my board or is just in everything. one of five, the five tiles that Steve has, um, which is great, which is wonderful. And I get a stone from that and it's Steve's turn. Okay, well, let's do housework. <clears throat> so one food per worker. That's three. Forgot to tag me uh, there. And I'm going to play the dungeon, place the dungeon. So that's three stone and one, two, three, four gold. I've been trying to build the dungeon like for my first three games, and I finally built it. Yay! Oh, sorry, Kitty. <clears throat> um, which, whenever I build a wall, I'll get two gold from the dungeon. Uh, and then I can pay an extra gold to build another building. Oh, but I don't have any space, so it's extra. It's like you need to excavate things. It's weird. You should excavate things. Weird. Um, well, the funny thing is, is I built this hole planning to put something and then it hasn't come out yet, which is kind of depressing. Because I, I could breach to get rid of it and then build something there that I could build, but I don't, I don't know if I want to. Uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. All right, I think I'm going to take undermining. Whoa. Um, do I want to do that? Actually, I think I'm gonna take expansion. Nice. Very nice. And expand my last one. Ah, oh, it's not the room I wanted. Don't care. Uh, and then I'm going to spend two gold to just do prospecting site. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it right here. Actually, I could put it here. Hmm. Hmm. All right, yeah, I'm going to put it here. Okay. Steve, a turn. Uh, 
Okay. Container. Tell me about Container, 10th edition. 10th anniversary edition. I've never heard of Container. Um, I am going to undermine. Um, so let's do cave entrance to get a flax, and then two flax for two food and two gold. Okay. And that's the roll. It's the penultimate round! Put your stuff back. I almost just put, like, all the stuff on my board back. Like... I mean, that works. Yeah. It's little container <sighs> ships. Ooh. Drift mining. All right. Um, and I start. Yay! Um, I am going to do masonry. Um, so I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get... Um, I'm going to get stone. And then I will activate this room, which lets me spend a fox and two wood to get three gold. And when I activate a room once, I get a wood. So I do that. And then it's Steve's turn. What kind of game is container? Is it like a resource management? Are you managing like where you place stuff? Tell me more. Oh, the climbers. I'm excited about the climbers. We're going to stream the climbers. I hope okay. next week. I got to figure out. We got to do like an earlier do stream of the climbers. One. Um, we might do a recorded stream of the climbers. Two, three, so four. not live. Just do a Tiffany and Steve play. Um, two food. Recorded. And then I'll edit wood. it together. And then one each of yeah. these. And then... One, 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 and one for one, two, three. Okay. Um. Do, 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 do. I'm going to take cultivation. Uh, I'm going to do two wheat and a flax. And then for the room that I activate, um, I'm going to go ahead and activate the spend two flax or one flax and two wood to get three gold. Steve turn. <laughs> a surprise stream. Uh, I should. I should just do a surprise stream. We'll probably stream it um do Monday, actually. We might do a surprise Monday There's stream the of treachery. the climbers. I think that's what we're gonna do. Um and then I will spend two gold to spend five gold to place the gold vein. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for my last action this round, I'm going to go ahead and do furnishing to get one food and then spend three food to place a room. And I'm going to place the state room! For seven gold. I'm now broke on gold. It's fine. Um, and that's my last action. And Steve. then I will take one more action. Night, Chad. Have a good Friday and weekend. Oh, of course you did masonry. Um, yeah, it was the first thing I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll excavate here, storeroom, and then spend two food to excavate the digging cave. Not too great, but then I'll go back up to one food because I found mushrooms. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take under... Oh, wait, we're done. Dang it! <laughs> I was like, I'll do other things! And I go first. Uh, is you there... Do. So this is interesting. It says more gold than your opponent, so if you're tied, neither of us can take it, is my assumption. Yes. So you'd have to get gold before you could take it. Steve, it's your turn. I know, and there are so many possibilities. 
So, I mean... So, I just want to point out, I've excavated everything uh, I kind of have to set up. Steve uh, is starting to excavate the rest of his room, but, um, yeah, we both have the same number of rooms currently, but I have excavated more than him. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to place... A wall? A wall. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, which gets me two gold. And then I will activate a room and then get a wood or a stone. So I'll get a stone. And... I think I'll just get... Uh, I'll just get a stone and a gold from my gold vein. You're sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do expedition to activate four rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and do mm, state room to get a flax and a gold. And then... Oh, man. I think... I only have three rooms, to, four, I do only have four rooms to activate, which is funny, but I don't have to activate them all. Um, oh, that's funny, you do, you're, you're a passive town. Yeah, so um, I am going to spend two wood and a flax to get three more gold. And then I will do the shelf to get two wood. And then I will spend the cave entrance to, uh, I guess, get a wheat. I'll do a flax. Okay. Steve return. My engine is intolerable. Um, I will cultivate. Oops. And throw the frame. So on. I will get two wheat one flax, and then I will activate my sacrificial altar. So, food, wheat, wood, and flax to get three gold. Oof, so now you have more gold than me again. I do. So I can't take that. You're a jerk. Cutthroat. You are a jerk, Mr. Kairos. A jerk. That's fine. I'm gonna take furnishing. Oh no. Oh no! There's very specific things I want to do. <laughs> and they didn't depend on, on taking that from Steve, but it would have it would have helped immensely. And I'm out of and I don't have enough food. Things are things are not looking great, everybody. Things are not looking great. Um Cat in the Basket's looking great. Cat in the Basket's looking comfy as balls. Um That's fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep. What are you What are you doing? Are we recreating the 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 lid right now? I don't know why we're doing that. Here, let's do it while we have this, and then we can do a thumbnail. All right. Okay. I don't know why we did that. But there we go. We did that. <laughs> the, the, the actions uh, and the, it, it's real cutthroat right now in the last round. It is super cutthroat right now. Um. To side of Steve, I never... No, I totally expect it. I'm going to do undermining. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get three actions. So I'm going to do stateroom. And then I'm going to do two wood and a fox to get three more gold. No! I get oh. um, And then I get one more action. So I'm going to shelf to bring my wood back up to two. Ah! This is so, like... Dun, 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 dun. This is so. This is the most cutthroat ending I've had to this game. It's pretty. It's pretty exciting. Also, I shouldn't have done that because I very specifically need some other things. Um, 
and I didn't do it. So I probably, I could have done better options. I had better options and I probably should have done them. But if I prevent him from getting that tile for a round, I am very happy. What you gonna do, Steve Weaver? He doesn't like it when I say that. I, I don't. He, not, he does not, not like being called Stevie Weavy, by the way. In the least. He's totally cool being called Cheating Steve, though. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta own it. Also, how is it almost nine and there's still daylight? How? John, if you're watching, you can go ahead and start heading over. <laughs> My goodness. Come on, don't be AP. I know. I know. The cat's back in the null space. I brushed Ichi today and I think I got three puppies off of her um, that I like captured and put in the bag. And then I think she had like another puppy worth of fur spread out throughout the yard because the breeze was blowing her fur. But yeah, she's much happier. It's supposed to get 100 degrees this weekend in Portland, which is crazy. So I was like, I should brush her. I'm probably going to actually just brush her every day for the next week because she just has so much fur that's blowing right now. Corgis, so much coat. Whereas Dina, I brushed like twice and I was like, I think I'm good. Like literally two strokes. And then I was like, all right, I think you're good. So, yeah. I don't think I can do it. That's fine. Take your turn. I can't get three gold. Come on, take your turn. Come on, come on, boy. It's a tragedy. It, I, of, the, of tragedies. It's the worst ever. How slow you're going. <laughs> It's an incredible tragedy. It's so awful. Just take your turn. <laughs> Come on. Uh, undergrowth, so I'm gonna get three puppies off my little. dog. How much fur I get off of them? I like, I, I, I compress it the fur into a bag, and then I'm like, this is three puppies worth uh, of fur. So yeah, I got three puppies worth of fur from Ichi today. My dog. Activate my gold vein. You done? Yeah. Yes! I take Arc. this one! And I get a wall, which is the Arc. last wall! And I build the treasury! Yeah. For three gold! Yep, 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 yep. Alright, your turn. It's your last action! What are you gonna do, Kairos? If you say go to Disney, I'll punch you. Yeah. I'm gonna do housework. Think. Hold on. Think. I think. I just realized, uh, because I was trying to get gold to thwart you, I can't do the thing I was gonna do. Ooh. I can't do that though. I think it's worth it. Okay. Okay, I think this works. <laughs> Don't so call text puppies. It's horrible. Don't do that. One. <laughs> Two, three, four oh. to place the digging cave here, which is one stone and three. Thank you for purchasing that and so I don't have to sweat the fact that I can't purchase I it. I will pay an additional gold to put the redding room here and a stone, which gets the three points. Yep. Yep. All right. I or actually, that was a stone. I can instead pay a wood and do the spinning wheel. Yep. Which is worth another point. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I am going to do. Cause it's either I get three gold, or I spend one gold to get six points. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take um. Furnishing to get a food, which is great because I need that. Because I'm going to spend four food in the form of two flax, a food, and gold mm. to build 
the bakehouse treatments. Um, which I'm gonna put right to there. And I get, I have to pay a wood and two stone for that. Yes. And then we're done! Look at our beautiful builds. Ooh. All right, and now we're gonna count our points. So um, the ashen tiles can go back to useless. Things you didn't use can go. Uh, and then the only resource that matters for points at the end of the game is gold. So one gold uh, is one point. So I have four points here in gold. Then your rooms, you can add up your rooms. And placement and where they are on your cave don't matter. So to make life easier, I just take them off to count. Um, I think I did that right. Let me double check. It's 12, 24. Oh, I didn't do math right. 3, 6, 12, 24, 26, 30, 40, 50. Three. You got 53? Ah! I got 50 exactly in rooms, and then three and then three. In gold. That was super close. That was very, very close. That was close. very close. I'm wondering if I if I Oof. hadn't have gold raced you. Yeah. If it, if I would have been better off doing other stuff, um, because Possibly. I had the walls that I and the resources where I could like build a whole bunch of stuff, but I didn't have the food. So I probably was better off doing what I did. Because it would have taken me like two actions to get the food. That was a lot of points. That was a big swing. And I would have gotten an extra two points because I would have gotten two from the wall and... Oh yeah, because you had dungeon. That's right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I did the better I did the better call. Thank you, um, So it's cave versus cave. Caverna, cave versus cave. That's our second game. Uh, tonight you can see kind of um, how it's a different plays uh, result in different... Um, different kind mm -hmm. of flows because of how the rooms come out uh if you watched the first uh game that we played this stream so let's talk about how we feel about it as we put it away um well one thing is uh so, oh uh, playing... as a caveat this is this was steve's third game and this was my sixth six and a half game um because we had a half game when they were teaching and then they, it turns out they were taught entirely wrong so yeah but um, well, so one thing I'll say is playing some of the Rosenberg games for the first time, like uh, Agricola Family Edition or Agricola, which I've only played on iPad, or Caverna, I get, uh, in some cases, I'd be a little overwhelmed by the possibilities in all the rooms, because you almost need to start thinking about what your strategies would be for the rooms early on in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, in Caverna Cave versus Cave, though, because the rooms are coming out as the games go, my possible choices are limited. So I'm thinking, okay, what's the best room for me to build now? Or what's the best wall layout to build because I know this room hasn't come out yet, but I want yeah. it. It's like a little bit more constrained than, oh God, all the buildings. Yeah. Um, and so I like that build up and that flow throughout the game. Yeah, um, and actually, this baggie is entirely useless for us, so I'm just gonna leave it by itself. Yeah, well, they said also those are you can use them as wooden replacements. Yeah, or if replacements you lose for the these, woodens. or if you don't like the size of those because they're kind of big, you can use the tiny little cardboard yeah. tokens, which I showed in the set. But um, I'm just gonna put all the other stuff in this spot. Um, this game is cutthroat in a way that I feel Ockboss is cutthroat. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the tiles come out is very reminiscent of Caverna and how the card actions yeah. for room selections come out. Because if you're not familiar with Caverna, let me quickly tell you about Caverna. So, whoosh, Caverna is a mountain of a game. Um, it is a game... <laughs> ha, Caverna is a game that very much benefits from having an insert. So we have the broken token insert for Caverna because there's so much in that game. Do you want to do you wanna yeah. go grab it and we'll show it? Yeah, we'll just... There's just so much in that game because it can support seven players and you have a lot of resources because you can get different types of resources similar to Agricola because you can mine and you can farm. Um, then you build a cave network on your board. Yeah, let's just show this, this beast. 
So Caverna, oh, that's so great. So this is a uh, Caverna Cave versus Cave next to Caverna. So it's, it's you can see similar size. This is a mountain. This is really heavy. Um, this is probably one of our heaviest games from a. That's super cute. Um, okay, so uh, we have the broken to token insert because there's just so much in this. There's player boards, there's market boards. Because it can go to seven players, there's a lot of stuff. We have a promo board. Um, so these are the room boards in Cave vs. Cave. So you have each of these boards sorry, out. In Caverna, sorry. sorry, in Caverna. In every game that you play, you have all of these boards out, and each of the spots on these boards is a room that you can have. And for the most part, there's only one of each of these types of rooms. But they're available for purchase at the very beginning of the game, just nobody has the resources need to purchase them. Um, and when you play with different player accounts, you have less options, or if you're playing the beginner game, they recommend you play with less room options, but if you're playing the full game, they're like, go crazy. Um, some of the rooms, there's only a few, there's a handful of rooms where there's multiples, um, and those are the ones that let you house your workers because you need those to get more workers, um, because they have to have a room to sleep in. But all of these rooms do various things where, like, some of them are passive, some of them are end of game scoring, some of them are you can do this to do this, but for the most part, um, so you have the dwellings which will house your workers, and then you have rooms that will house your animals or certain animals of certain types, then there's like, at the end of the game, you get eight points if all of your dwarves in play have a weapon, right? Or um, you have the writing chamber which prevents negative points, which is great. Um, and then, like, there's some passive ones where every time you get a dog, you get a piece of wood because in Caverta you can have dogs. Um, at the beginning of the next five rounds, you get a stone. Um, at the beginning of the next seven rounds, you get a wood. So there's a lot more passive stuff, but a lot of um, how you do in Caverna depends on what rooms you get. Um, there's also some rooms where it's like, at any time before you score, turn two pigs into two money and two food. So um, how Caverna plays out once you start getting really good at Caverna, it will depend on who gets what rooms. Um, and then, there's all these action boards. So, these these are not all for the same game. But basically, depending on the number of players that you're playing with, you're playing with a subset of these boards, which are action spaces, and the card ones are the ones that are available every round. And then, there are... There's this board. So this would be the setup for a uh, two or three player game. Mm -hmm. And so we would have all of these boards and we would start the game with all of these action spots available and then there's a deck of cards that you stack a certain way and that's all of these actions and they'll come out and you know that in um, stage one there's going to be this one, this one, this one. Like you know what cards are going to come out, you just don't know what order. So very similar to what we're doing in Cave versus Cave. Um, then... For the players, you have a farming area similar to Agricola, where you clear forest to plant farms. And then you have a cave area where you are putting your rooms and you also can mine for resources and ore, which lets you get weapons, which is a whole other like thing that I'm not gonna talk about. So with cave versus with Caverna, it kind of ties in the Agricola farming part and animal husbandry part, and then adds the cave networks for doing rooms in a designated area, as opposed to an agricola where you just have a farm board and you have to manage building onto your house and delegating land for either your house or for your farming or for your animals. And Caverna, you can put animals in either your cave if you build the right places or your farmland. Um, but this area is mostly just for like animals or farm, and this animal, this area is for rooms that gives you different bonuses. Sometimes for it's for your animals, but for the most part, you're doing mining here and housing for um, housing for your people. So um, with cave versus cave, you're literally you're just doing this part of the game. You're just doing the building out a cave getting racing to get the room tiles which are available and um, you're doing that via the action selection that is revealed as you play. So um, 
it definitely pulls out a part of the game. I just want to show more of what's in the Caverna box. So these are the resources and stuff that you get in Caverna when you're doing it. So you're managing um, vegetables for food because you have to feed your workers. You're doing animal husbandry with the, the animals. And then you also can like cut down trees and, and mine resources. Um, you can also use the animals to feed your workers, although you might not want to. Yes. Um, and so then down here we have all of the various tiles that you can do as you clear forests to do like animal pens or farmland and stuff like that. And then you can also, as you excavate your cave, do different tunnel systems for different mining and stuff like that. And then there's like a whole weapon track that you can do, which is this box to get weapons for your workers in Caverna. It's, it's involved. All right. Um, so when people are like, is this a simpler version of Caverna? The answer is resounding yes. But Cave vs. Cave is also just... Oh, jeez. I would say Cave vs. Cave is legitimately an, a fourth of Caverna. Mm -hmm. Because in Caverna, you have mining, you have weapons. You have... Or you have mining, you have expeditions, which is the weapons. You have animal husbandry, and you have farming, and you have room building. And in Cave vs. Cave, you literally are just doing room building. So I guess it's a fifth. Well, no, but it has the, the actions and cards that come out. Well, yeah, but, like, for what you're focusing on in Caverna versus Cave versus Cave, Cave versus Cave is one-fifth of the Caverna experience, which I think is fine. I love Caverna. Steve and I both really love Caverna. Also, by the way, this is the broken token insert, if you were curious. Um, well, and all, it's like how all creatures, big and small... Um, you know, it's just animal husbandry. You're not doing any crops. It's that kind of... Well, and you're not... In all creatures, big and small, you don't have to feed your family. You don't have to worry about crops. You are building your house, but you're not really building your house. You're only building things in your house to deal with animal husbandry. Um, so, yeah, it's... There's a lot that's going on in Caverna. There is considerably less happening in Cave versus Cave. Um... But if you are, a f so if you are a fan of Caverna because of all that is involved in Caverna, you might be disappointed by Cave versus Cave. I'm just, you know, because there's a lot that happens in Caverna, and if you were expecting a two-player version of Caverna, just play, just play Caverna with two players. Um, but if you want a Caverna-esque experience, or if you wanted to focus on the room building part of Caverna, Cave vs. Cave is really good on that, and it also does a really interesting thing with how the rooms come out randomly as you play, and how the actions are revealed. Um, also, if you wanted to level someone up into Caverna, the decisions that you're making in terms of, you know, I can only do so many actions this round, which things do I need for my engine? That's very Caverna-like. Yeah. And you would say it's very similar You'd say it's very similar to full Caverna, you're just doing all these other things. But fundamentally, you're still doing actions, you're still turning resources into other resources, and you're still building rooms. Yeah. Because I, I would not have been able to handle Agricola if, we, if you hadn't played all creatures big and small first. So I, I would say this is in a similar vein. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's one of those things. I, you just made a cave joke. Um, so I would recommend... If you wanted to get somebody into Rosenberg games and like kind of or level yourself up into that experience of playing like a full Caverna or a full Agricola um, and like you've only really done Patrick, I would actually go with Cave versus Cave first. I would do Cave versus Cave um, because it's it's I think it's a lot more casual game friendly, casual gamer friendly, um, and it gets them into the concept of like action selection and the importance of the rules and like how to see and build engines and manage your resources. I think Cave vs. Cave is great for that. Then I would go into Agricola All Creatures Big and Small because it uses the worker placement and resource management access part and there's some building of like structures. Um, but then you're learning about the animal husbandry and the breeding part and, like, the having to do fences and things like that for managing your animals. Um, and then I would go, depending on if what part of those two games you enjoyed more, like, if you like the animal husbandry part of uh, All Creatures Big and Small more than the cave exploration part, then go with Agricola as mm -hmm. your uh, Rosenberg full game. If you enjoyed the cave exploration, ex, uh, exploration and digging and room racing part, go with Caverna. Um, they both have 
they both have animal husbandry, they both have farming, um, Agricola versus Caverna, but the, um... That's the third the cave, two-player game. Yeah, uh, the, Sorry. the explanation, uh... The exploration, Steve and I enjoy the exploring of the caves mm -hmm. and the management of our weapon systems and the racing for rooms more than we enjoy um, managing farms and building out houses and doing farm-based chaining combos uh, in Agricola. Which is, I still enjoy that. It's a lot of fun, but I really do enjoy the, yeah, I, I think I really enjoy the exploring in this and how the stuff comes out. Yes. All Creatures Big and Small is out of print currently, but it is getting a reprint, and the reprint will come, will include all of the expansions and all of the different rooms and stuff that have been released throughout the years for Whoa. All Creatures Big and Small. And we already own All Creatures Big and Small, and we own all of the expansions, and I'm really tempted to pick that up, because it's $40, I believe is the targeted MSRP for All Creatures Big and Small, and we really, really like that game. Um, Nutters asks, uh, well, earlier Nutters asked if I would recommend doing Caverna versus Feast for Odin. Totally different games. Uh, 100% different game. They both have about as much stuff in them. Feast for Odin just has cardboard instead of wood. Um, so they're very different. Feast for Odin is a much more, uh, I feel like it's a harsher game than Caverna. Mm -hmm. Because in Converna, you're farming and you're doing animals and you're mining uh, to get things. Whereas in Feast for Odin, you start the game with a ton of negative points. And the entire purpose of the game is to reduce your negative points. Like, that's the purpose of the game. So you're going to be acquiring things and getting things. And there's a spatial reasoning part in regards to covering up your board, um, which will reduce your negative points. But you're starting at a negative, and that can be really overwhelming. To be like, oh, okay, I'm at negative 40 points. Let's start playing, you know? Yeah. So um, there's that. Well, and also in Caverna, uh, you can kind of buy your way out of a jam by spending the gem or ruby resources um, or going on expeditions where you get a menu and you can say you can pick basically whatever resource you want as long as your dwarf had the high enough level. Yeah. Um, and in both of those cases, you can kind of save your butt and get the resource you need to then continue your chaining combo or be able to feed your people so you don't have to take a begging token. Whereas in Feast for Odin, you can definitely get in a jam. Uh, and it's it felt... It's been a little while since I played it, but it felt definitely harder to get out of that like resource starvation. Oh, I need this one thing. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And then Netters uh, asked uh, as well... Would you recommend getting Caverna instead of Cave vs. Cave? And I don't know if I could say that. I, I would say if you've never played Caverna um, and you've played maybe Agricola and you're not super interested in Agricola, maybe, um, I would say go for the $28 game Cave vs. Cave. Um, unless you're like super positive that you like the commitment to Caverna, which is the bigger, heavier, longer title. It's significantly heavier, like, physically and mentally. It also um, costs a lot more. I would recommend getting Cave versus Cave. See if you enjoy the way that the you're fighting for rooms and kind of the engine and the excavation part, knowing that this is literally one-fifth, and it's not even, like, a true one-fifth of Caverna. Because in Caverna, like I said, you know all the rooms that are already out, and they're already available for purchase at the beginning of the game. You just have to dig your, your cave out and get the resources to, to build the rooms. Whereas in Cave vs. Cave, the rooms aren't available yet. You have to find the rooms, which is dependent on your opponent digging out their cave. So you have to dig out your cave, hope that the rooms that you want come out, and you're more reactionary to the rooms that you're building and the combos that you are making. Mm -hmm. Although I do feel like... It wouldn't work like this, but if we played Cave versus Cave enough, we would be comfortable playing a game with all the rooms out in Caverna style, because we kind of know the combos and the engines and stuff, but the way to learn those, I think, like, the way to learn what combos work is to play a style of game like this where the rooms come out piecemeal. Yeah. And you can kind of see the combos without being overwhelmed. Yeah. And then on that note, I was going to say, um, if you are a Caverna fan and you're wondering if it's worth it getting Cave versus Cave... If you want a two-player game that gives you kind of the reminiscent feel of Caverna um, and plays in easily less than an hour... Um, oh, John's walking over. We are ready. 
I will give um, another red one later. Um, sorry. But if you are, if you, if you really enjoy Caverna, but you're like Steve and I, where we're like, man, I want to play Caverna, but I don't want to pull it out and set it up, and we don't have time to play it, um, Cave vs. Cave kind of scratches the Caverna feeling. It's a very different game. It is, it is Caverna-ish for one-fifth of the Caverna experience. Um, it is cutthroat. I have enjoyed every game of it. I have enjoyed each game more than the last. Um, I am starting to see that I am kind of disadvantaging myself because I now know the rooms well enough that I am kind of holding out for rooms to appear that may never appear or may appear way too late, which is what happened in this game. So, um, I'm, I'm interested to play it more and to get to 10 plays and, uh, maybe see if, see if I overcome that or see if that's just something that I'm going to continually be hung up on. Um, but the way that the action tiles come out and the way that the rooms come out, um, Angelus and I played it three times together. Steve and I have now played it three times together. Um, and so I'm really interested to see as Steve plays as much as I've played, if it gets more cutthroat, um, it, or if one of us just dominates the other because we're way more, uh, we can remember the rooms better and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. One thing I would say, I think it would be kind of fun to play back-to-back -back Caverna and All Creatures. Because in a way, that's that's now you've got two-fifths of Caverna because you, you've got the animal husbandry and the cave exploration. Like, we could, I don't think our brains could handle playing Caverna and Agricola, the full games, back-to-back. -back. Oh, no. But as a taste, we could just... We could totally do yeah. this, and then All Creatures Big and Small. And this actually has made me want to play All Creatures Big and Small again, which is kind of interesting. Um, but we are Caverna people. There are some people that hate Caverna and they love Agricola. We played Agricola. It took me years to get Steve to the place in his gaming career to fully appreciate and understand Agricola. And we played it, and he was just like, kind of good. I don't really, we don't really need to have this. I'd rather play Caverna, and I'm the same it's, way. Yeah. And I have a really good friend who is the opposite, and he plays Caverna because we want to play Caverna, but he's like, I don't really need to play this again. I love Agricola. And he and his partner play Agricola an insane amount. Um, they play on the iPad constantly. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, New Jersey and Oregon, you don't pump your own gas. So we don't pump our own gas here in Oregon. Sorry, the chat is talking about petrol stations. I don't know why they're talking about petrol stations, but the chat is talking about petrol stations. Um, and Kabuki just said, uh, if you live in New Jersey, you don't pump your own gas. So, and neither do yeah. we. It took us a while. It's one of those. It took us a while to get used to not pumping our own gas. And then now when we go to other states, we have to remember that we do actually pump our own gas. Which I sometimes am happy to do because I like getting out of the car if we're on a road trip, like stretching my legs and pumping gas. Whereas like sometimes... <laughs> oh, John's here. Uh, we're going to play Lignum. The girls went crazy because John's here. But anyway, um, that was Kaverna K vs. K. I hope this stream was helpful and informative to you and you enjoyed it. Um, and we're going to go play more board games now. And also eat dinner because we haven't done that yet. Hey, John. Do you want to come, do you want to come say goodnight to the internet? <laughs> From Good chat night, to here. Yeah. It's magic. John John lives within <laughs> walking distance. I had a lovely walk. Yeah. It's, very, it's a nice night out. It really is. It's gorgeous. It's nice and a little bit cool in the air. Yeah. It's really good. All right. Cool. All right. All right. Good night. Good night, Internet. We'll see you Good on night. Sunday for an 18XX stream with special guest Nicholas. Um, it'll be at 3 p.m. Sunday. I will post more information about that as we get there. Um, we'll probably do a bonus stream on Monday of The Climbers, and then The Climbers is being sent off to its next trip. If you didn't know, The Climbers is getting a reprint from Capstone Games, and it is doing a summer tour starting here in Portland. So if you want to know where The Climbers is, go ahead and follow it on Twitter. It's the underscore underscore climbers, um, and that will be updated with wherever it is next. I think it's going to Seattle next, and then after Seattle, I believe it's going to the Bay Area. So if you live in those areas and you're interested in playing, go ahead and follow the climbers and it will say where it will be.
for playing of other people. So yeah. Oh, and then Tuesday we're playing Lignum with John and special guest Nicholas. And then Thursday we're going to play something else. <laughs> we're shooting so many things. Um, I have a tentative schedule right now, but things are changing and in flux as like, stuff gets announced. So yeah. Um, thanks for watching. If you're watching this in the future, thanks for coming back and watching. And I hope this was helpful for you. And uh, have a good night. Yeah. Bye. Good night, Internet. Good night. Dun da da. <laughs> dun dun dun. Cat basket. Cat basket. Cat 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 basket. Okay, we can put this back. Yeah, we have so many guests. We need to have more guests. Uh, I'm so bummed our friends are coming to town and they're gonna leave like the uh, afternoon before the stream and they arrive the evening after the stream. And I'm just I mean, like, no. Unless we do a lunch stream, but that's silly. We could do a weekend bonus. Stream.